What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're going to watch a show called, a movie called Heat. Heat. Do you have any thoughts or remarks on this before we start? On the show? The movie. The movie's so dope. The movie is dope. It's cool. There I'd... wasn't a lot of action scenes. We had to mm -hmm. kind of just like get to action. It's almost three hours long and it's just filled with some amazing actors. Amazing dialogue, yeah. Amazing dialogue. If you ever, like, it's so hard to watch the shows that we watch, especially with Steven Seagal. <laughs> Cause it's like, I feel like their lines, like what's that thing in bingo where it has all the balls in it, and then you got to pull out the numbers. Is that bingo? I think so. So that's how I feel like, that's how they do dialogue for Steven Seagal movies. Is they have one-liners on all those balls, mm -hmm. and then they just pull them out and be like, "This is what you're gonna say," and then they'll roll it up, pull out another, like, "This is what you're gonna all. say." Yeah, man. <laughs> you owe me sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Like what? You're in, the, you're in the middle of combat scene. Like you were <laughs> just putting together, just putting that random mean. together, and then Steven Seagal starts ad libbing. He's like, "Better than 50." <laughs> all right, so let's get into this movie. There's some pretty awesome action scenes, and he, you guys recommended this one all the time. Uh, the action scenes are surprisingly accurate. Mm. As a matter of fact, before we talk about the movie and jump in, I have something pulled up on my old computer over here. I was instantly intrigued by the fact that I saw an FNFAL, which is something that a uh, rifle that we had to break down in the Bravo course and put back together. I haven't touched it or seen it since, uh, but I was like, damn, that's a strange rifle to pick, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I looked it up just to see how many rifles are in this show. So there's a Heckler & Koch HK91A2, an IMI Galil Arm, a Galil is another one that we did in the Bravo course, actually. It's not this version. This thing's crazy looking. M16A1, which that I would expect. Narinko Type 56 one which looks like an AK-47 platform. I'm assuming it's 5.56. Oh, it's a Chinese uh, AK platform. They have a Heckler & Koch SR9T. It's one of the sniper teams from the uh, police. I have one of those. Oh, you don't. You don't even have a BB gun, bro. There's the FN, FNC. Here we got the Colt Model 733. And the list of the weapons in this movie are just go on and on. It's crazy. You would think they would just do what everyone else does and just buy a bunch of M4s mm -hmm. or a bunch of M16s and that's what they use. Right. But I just thought it was really cool to have that variety of rifles in the movie. It's crazy attention to detail. Yeah, it's neat. Like who would care that much? Right. dope i thought that charge was badass so basically uh he was having trouble with this clacker that clacker comes uh usually comes in a kit with the claymores so you have it attaches to uh your blasting cap and the clacker is just uh, the initiator mm -hmm. so that was pretty neat they attach it to a shape charge um and clearly actually blew the charge yeah which that's badass the fact that they just were, were like Nah, why fake it? Let's just blow this damn charge. <laughs> and then they show them, because you could tell when it blows out all three or four of those car's windows at the same time, that that was just a legit charge that they did in blue. Yeah, it looks absolutely violent. I don't really know anything about explosives. You guys know that, but you can still see something and tell when it's like they've tried really hard and, uh, and it didn't work. You know, it just fails. It doesn't feel like it was violent. It doesn't feel like it was a pretty you know, crazy explosion, but that looked like it was like just bad. Like it, you, everything blows out the way they do that quick edit when the clacker does work and it's, it's silent for a second then yeah. it just hits you. It's, yeah, it it's, sick. It, it's a sick explosion. And I just love explosive because you get to figure out what's going to be the best way and the best use, what type of explosive you're going to use. Uh, you want a cutting charge probably for something where you want to cut out like some metal. Um, how are you going to shape it? So essentially you could uh, make like little shape charges. Um, you could, you know, blow, it's just so much. It's like art class for adults. Making charges is one of the funnest things I've ever done. Yeah, yeah, man. I love working with explosives, you know? Like I take my C4 uh, thing and I'll put like the little phone on it and I'll mm -hmm. attach the wire and then I'll go outside, you know, and then I'll blow things up and I'll be like, man, that was an awesome explosion. I'll come back inside the house and yeah. I'll make more C4. Sometimes I'll mix it with uh, hydro bombs, Oof, you know? C4 sick. hydro bombs and I'll put it on the door so that it implodes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I love working with explosives. It's an awesome thing. And this looks surprisingly accurate. <laughs> is that your little bullshit <laughs> attempt to be me? Is that what we sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Did 
There's, it seems like every movie, there's that one spaz that just can't keep his shit together and then causes everything else to get way more violent. Right. Every single time they go in for a robbery or any type of an operation in a movie, there's always the one guy who can't stop from just deciding to kill everyone. Yeah. And then the boss gets mad at him. Yeah. It's uh, the town. Oh, yeah. Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves. There's just always that one spazzy ass guy that can't keep his shit together. And then everything falls apart because he shot one person and then it turns into a war. Yeah. That's all uh, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, Reservoir like Dogs. One of the main story like storyline is that the guy goes in there and starts shooting everybody. And so it turns into a war and they all have to retreat to the, the yeah. garage. So if you're watching this, stop inviting that guy. <laughs> I don't understand. What's if you wrong have here. a guy that seems like he's a little unhinged, yeah. maybe don't take him to rob the bank. Don't invite him with you. Leave his ass at home. <laughs> so he's gonna be fine. <laughs> he's like, he's like, listen, man. I know that I, like, I shot everybody in the last one, but I ain't gonna do it again. <laughs> I promise, man. I went to church and did my repentance. I ain't gonna do it again. I am good. I took my medication. And then he shows up. He's like, ha. <laughs> Everybody dead. You know what else is cool? And tell me if you guys remember this. Is This reminds me of that huge shootout that happened in L.A., mm. that bank robbery. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. So, yeah, comment if you guys remember that. It's been a long time, and I don't remember all the details, but they went to go rob a bank in L.A. It's an infamous shootout. And then when they came outside, they, they were wearing kit. They were using AK-47s. And I don't know what rounds they were using, but apparently that was, I think they were armor-piercing bullets that they yeah, had. Yeah, it could be 7.62 armor-piercing. And they were basically like all split up running around behind cars it was all like you would love to watch it it was straight up tactics on the police part on their part they were clearly clearly trained in some discipline of shooting they were and it got so bad that they finally realized one of the guys finally realized he wasn't going to get away he walked off on camera the helicopter was watching him he shot himself oh shit on camera yeah he Should was break down that scene. he was he was behind a car and, and he had his ak and as soon as that was out of rounds he got his pistol and he dumped a few out of that and then when he realized it's over like he's surrounded it's a car and there's like buildings behind him and it's just all in the open. He's not getting away. He just started walking dude, and went, Doof. no joke. We should film that tonight. Cause I want to break that down. Okay. Yeah. We I'm, could I just talk about police. Cause I've been military and been law enforcement. So I could talk about tactics on the law enforcement side and what their objective is. And then tactics on the, the military train uh, guys side and see what they did, right. What they did wrong. Obviously mm -hmm. all of it was wrong, but tactics wise, I think it'd be a cool breakdown and, just analyze that kind of because we always watch these movies and mm -hmm. then to see something that happened in real life mm -hmm. that would be pretty cool to do so if we could pull up that footage we'll we'll break that down that seems pretty badass yeah it's an infamous shootout most it, people remember it to this day because it all took place a lot of laws were implemented i believe after that mm -hmm. on time delays and things like that when they're broadcasting the news live it's crazy that they would pick armor piercing rounds too because like that's overkill for police, to be honest. A lot of our stuff isn't armored. Mm -hmm. So that's like, except for our, you know, our plates, but damn, that's terrifying. <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> that was probably a real homeless person I know. who really thought a bank was getting robbed. <laughs> They're just trying to kick him off the set. Yeah. All right, pause. Hydro bomb? <laughs> is that a thing? Hydro bomb? That just means a water bomb. So I guess, yeah, water charge. I thought I heard one. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think. I water thought charge. I thought you guys said hydro bomb at some point, so I was trying to repeat it. But No, I would say hydro charge. Mm. And hydro charge, it's just using water as a way to disperse the energy. So you could use water on the back of a charge to, you know, create more force going forward. So less, less of that force of the charge is like this burst going backwards mm -hmm. or you can put it on the front and then have the water be more of a pushing charge mm -hmm. so we always talk about with metal wind uh, metal doors and we're experimenting with charges the uh, water charge helps to create more surface area and bend the door in because mm -hmm. if you just do a little explosion you'll pop a hole in a metal door but then the doors hinges are still good right so uh, you know the, using a, a water charge is a really good way to bend it in and then the door will fall and you'll you'll beat the um, locking mechanisms that way but this is a uh, clearly just like probably a little thing of gas with a, a c4 and a timer i just thought it was awesome because it's like every movie after this just copied the shit out of them yeah, yeah like we, we've every seen a lot movie of movies. does this i think there's a lot of things that we see in this movie that are kind of become staples in other movies yeah. and obviously they could have taken it from movies before them but they just did it so well 
that you can tell other things afterwards like oh you clearly got that from yeah. influence from like yeah one it's of these like original if movies. you're making a bank robber movie mm -hmm. robbery movie you sit down and watch heat first and take notes yeah absolutely and it's like okay this this is the standard this is how it's got to be because this movie, movie is so damn good it's when movies used to be good and i hate saying that because it sounds so old when i say that but movies used to be so good man and now they're just there's so much garbage well i feel like in 100 percent honesty the actors had to be better then. Mm -hmm. oh, like yeah. they really had to rely on dialogue and being good actors. And now you could just throw them into space and they're getting shot at by aliens and, <laughs> and all this shit. So now it's like dialogue has taken a sec has taken a back seat mm -hmm. and the acting has suffered. Like if you watch the Avengers, we would all say that every actor in the Avengers is great, right? Right. But watch the Avengers. As you watch it, five second clip change actors change actor change actor change actor so it's really just a series of one liners from every single actor mm. almost nobody gets like long dialogues right. in these movies anymore so when you have someone like Al Pacino Robert De Niro they can handle sitting down having a full out conversation and you're like fully engaged because the best dialogue ever and they can execute that dialogue which is still an iconic scene to this day mm -hmm. by the way I, I think at the time Robert De Niro was obviously a huge actor and known for that kind of gangster role. And then so was Al Pacino, known for that type of role that he takes on. And so when they finally put them together in a movie, everyone was like, oh, damn. Was... And then they sat down and talked to each other like gangsters. Yeah, it was so sick. It was so awesome. It was like Alpha versus Alpha yeah. when they were sitting down. It looks like a toy truck. Yeah, it does. Before drones existed. So it had to use the high building or mm -hmm. you're not getting the shot? You just shove the guy all the way up there with a yeah. camera for like six hours. Can I come down? So I just think that's a, tactically that's just a good uh, location mm -hmm. to have a meeting. You've got a wide open field and then you have a huge tower that you could have overwatch position from. Um, it's just smart, smart tactics. Right. I don't know. The house is, prevents kind of a security issue. Uh -huh. So uh, likely if that was my meeting point, I would go there hours before and clear it. Right. Before taking the high position. Yeah. So clear it, take the high position. Once you have overwatch, you know if someone goes in there or not. Okay. So you can maintain security on that building. And then that whole field is now yours to the overwatch. Right. It also it's also cool that details matter, right? They mm -hmm. didn't show up in two brand new Mercedes, right? Right to talk to each other. He's got That's a, a Dodge pickup truck that clearly looks like maybe you know a farmer, rancher, or just some typical dude who yeah. works. You know what I mean? And a dirty pickup truck, and then you've got this like station wagon looking car. Nobody's gonna see that and be like, "Oh, that's totally a criminal." That's like, a really good point. Conversation. I didn't even think about that. That's yeah. like it's so smart. Now it's like the people that make these movies think we're so stupid yeah. that they have to show us that they're crime bosses. So it's like his Mercedes, his black Mercedes. Or no, it's always a black SUV. Right. And then they get out of the back of it. Yeah. Which shows that with he's like, being driven around. So he's somebody with a lot of money and somebody who's important who just happens to be in an empty parking lot next to another car where another, another guy's getting out with a briefcase. Yeah. Anybody walking past that with no experience at all would just be like, A security That's guard would walk by and be like, yeah. hmm. <laughs> yeah, but that's a really good point. These two cars are just like they look like they're coming to either work on the field or buy or a check car, check it out, or yeah, check out each other's cars. Right. It's just no one would look twice at these two cars. No, that's blending in. That's being the exactly great man. details. Yeah, start paying attention to those filmmakers. Not being a gray man walking around with team hats and. <laughs> Hiking boots, stretchy pants, oh, and he's some going, gators. He's going terminalist on yeah. us. He's, you guys haven't seen. You guys haven't seen the next episode. We are doing terminalist, yeah. and you're gonna love this one. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Kurt's in it. So Kurt defends Kurt terminalist. Likes terminalist. I smash it, but whatever. If so, if it made a movie now, you would show up looking like Jack Carr, jumping out of a fucking Land Rover, being like. <laughs> Walking into a restaurant like you're waiting for a <laughs> missile to hit it. <laughs> oh, got him. Are these on top of the closer building? I don't know.
Boom, boom, boom. All right, pause. So there's another um, point for tactics for that picking that position, one way in, one way out. Mm. So then the guy had to go out that same exit, which they already had a guy with a shotgun, which is a perfect weapon choice given what your job is. is for the spread. If your last ditch effort to stop somebody from leaving mm -hmm. uh, that stole the money or, or shot at you or whatever, then a shotgun was the perfect weapon choice. And that's what he did. He just blasted him, boom, boom, boom. Um, and then Overwatch, I'm not sure how Overwatch missed a guy getting out of the vehicle and creeping up on him, but eventually he saw it mm -hmm. uh, and radioed to him. The only thing I would, I wouldn't do personally, and this made me my, from my being a cop experience, but anytime I'm in a shady situation in a vehicle where I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to get out quick, I don't put it in park. Yeah. So I'll just leave it in drive, leave it in reverse, depending on my route. But then using the vehicle to pin the guy up against the wall, the fact that he got up and walked away and was like just limping, I think is yeah, it's a little little far fetched. He would probably be just down was. and out because he just smushed his ass. Mm -hmm. That would suck. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the the bullets, like the way they're the guns, the way they're being fired, sounds so much better oh, and yeah. so much more violent and menacing than most movies. I think, oh, yeah. and I think it's because, like, again, I'm not like an avid shooter or anything, but I've heard guns being fired in front of me, and it's like there's a there's an air, there's a movement of air that takes place. It's like a. Tsk, that goes along with the shot. And I think most movies just get rid of that and just try to focus on like the gunshot, the explosion of the powder yeah. itself. So that, and then make that really loud. As to where this sounds like you're hearing it being fired in front of you. Yeah. Like there's air moving. I don't know how to explain it, but it just sounds so sounds, much better. Sounds super real. Yeah. Like I've shot in that same weapon system that he's using. The, I'm pretty sure that one was the FNFAO. And I've shot in that one and it sounds like that. It's a 7.62, it's loud. And it just, it, you're right, it just sounds really good. There's a violence to it where yeah. I almost want it to stop. You know what I mean? When he's yeah. shooting, there's, there's this thing that you feel when it feels real as to where when you, I've watched other movies and they're shooting guns and then you feel nothing. It's like, da, 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 da. Or like uh, Steven Seagal sniping. It's like, patoon, <laughs> patoon, patoon. <laughs> While he's getting 100 out of 100 yeah. shots. They're like, Steven, we don't have any more money to make the sound. He's like, I don't need to watch this. <laughs> patoon. He's a sniper shot. When my bullets ran out, I just throw it at him, and it's gonna hit him and kill him too. He's like, watch this. I got nine mil too. He's like, I got shotgun. I've been shooting guns for like six, seven years. Yeah. I've been doing <laughs> gun sound effects for like forty-five years. Tom Segura, you funny, funny man. <laughs> Oof. Oh God. Just unloaded, dude. Allstate is on your side. <laughs> Kill the Allstate guy. <laughs> oh, like, you in good hands? Yeah. <laughs> we watched this last night. Abel was like, he's not in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, got him. <laughs> But again, this scene is so badass. It's mm -hmm. so accurate to what a, a gunfight would be. The chaos, everyone just shooting. They're not just like, bah, 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 and then everyone headshot, headshot, headshot. They're not. They're also not like just shooting and no one ever gets hit. It's like the perfect mix of missing and hitting that many rounds flying through the air. Yeah, it feels ugly. It Good. feels like almost yeah, like the gross. way they portray war accurately. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like this is portrayed in a way it's like, listen, you're going out there. A lot of you guys are going to die. You're gonna crash. Shit's gonna get smashed. Civilians are gonna get hurt. It's ugly, right? It's yeah. the it's the way a, a bank robbery when everybody has guns and is shooting at each other or whatever's going on would go. Yeah, the cops not the cops don't they're not like doing some crazy tactics or anything. They're just mm -hmm. running trying to get a shot at the vehicle. If they have shotguns, they're shooting them. Rifles, whatever they have, they're shooting them. It's just a mess. The guys are trying to get away. They're shooting through the windshields. Uh, it's just everyone's shooting trying to get out of there, and it's right. just so badass and. 100% like that's what it would be like. Mm -hmm. Sick. And I know we're fanboying over this movie, but it's just such a damn it's so good. good movie and such a good era for movies. Bro.
Dude, this scene is insane. Dude, it's I'm, insane. Val Kilmer is so dope in this movie. Yeah, Val Kilmer's killing it. Like, I don't know about the rest of his career, some good, some bad, but his, like, just the way he looks, the look he has, the long hair. Yeah, his, he's in a ponytail, his, but like, he's like, killing people. His it's cheesy like, dialogue, but the, his, like, one, like, kind of, like, basic dialogue. He doesn't talk too much. Right. So when he does, you're, like, paying attention. He's kind of creepy. He, he carries this weird, almost villainous yeah. thing to him in this movie. And then you got Al Pacino just being an absolute, his character being an absolute badass, like running around, getting into it and chasing it, not trying yeah. to get away from it, right? And these guys, there's so much going on here that's like textbook, right? Bounding mm -hmm. and using cover. And they're not like, they're, they're shooting, everyone in this movie is shooting their rifles like they're rifles. Mm -hmm. And that was blowing my mind. We watched people and they're always just like, da 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 It's <laughs> like these toy guns they've never held they're before. They're holding it away from me. They're like, holding it away. Da, da. They're Shoot doing this. Stuff. They're just doing random stupid shit. These guys always have it pocketed. They're aiming down their sights. Even if he's spraying and praying, his transition from target, at least he's transitioning to the direction of the target super accurately. So it's like, ba 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 So there's times when spray and pray is the right answer, but you're not gonna do this or just like not look. You're still gonna pocket it, aim, and take accurate shots in a general vicinity. I've done that in combat before. I know someone's in that area. I'm just letting it loose. You know, I've put it on guys before where I can't judge exactly where they're at because it was nighttime, we're under nods. So I'll do a lasso, you know, to try and hit those shots. So, but his, his target transitioning was so money. Just da, 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 da. And he's snapping, da, 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 snapping to the next one. Da, 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 da. Everyone's got it in their shoulder pocket. Everyone's shooting a rifle and their weapon systems like their weapon systems. Mm -hmm. no, none of this is like, oh, this is a toy and we're in a movie. It's like they're in a gunfight. Yeah. And they're acting like they're in a gunfight. I love it. Both the good guys and the bad guys are bounding to cover. Go, set. You know, they're not calling like military set, go, which I think is even better, right? Because I don't want to hear set, go, set, go. If we've been working for, together for a while, I know that you're set because I could hear you shooting. And then when I hear you shooting, that's my cue to stop shooting and move. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. Boom, 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 move, boom, boom. They're perfectly bounding. And then the good guys are bounding towards them, taking cover, getting closer, pushing, maneuvering. Mm -hmm. It's just textbook. It's a beautiful uh, tactics scene. Yeah. Everything about the tactics in this, this movie so far has been top notch. We're gonna do a Nerf war in the house. We're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have one of the kids follow him with a phone. One of the kids follow me with a phone. We're both getting a Nerf gun. We're gonna start on opposite sides of the house, and we're in a pretty big house, and we're gonna see who gets shot first. I'm gonna smoke your ass. I know, but it's gonna be a <laughs> but it's gonna be a really fun game, and I might shoot you. And I know that yeah. if I shoot him first, he'd be pissed. Imagine I don't. Imagine you come out and snap me. Yeah, it would, it would be that'd be awesome. It'd be awesome for you and really embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Gangster. So sick. You see Al Pacino just take aim and he was like, pop, pop, pop. And they're all like, tink, tink, tink. Yeah. Like they're shooting the cars. Yeah. And I don't know, like, they did not spare any expense on making this as real as possible. Well, clearly with the guns, the list of guns that you just yeah. mentioned. They knew what they were doing. Someone's a, a huge fan of uh, shooting and, and mm -hmm. tactics that advise this movie. And for once, they actually listened, I guess. Yeah. I would love to get someone that actually knows to talk about, like, what the thought processes were and how they were able to achieve such accuracy. Mm -hmm. The only thing I didn't like is when Robert De Niro started burst firing. It's like, dude, that mag is going to be dumped in, like, two seconds. Mm -hmm. Never burst fire. We don't burst fire and we don't auto auto fire. You always single shot. Because it's like you I could shoot just I could shoot as fast or as slow as I want with single shot. Right. And conserve my ammo depending on my situation. So making a mistake, it has much more of an impact because so many more bullets are gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do a burst shot like that, brah, 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 you're only getting a few, you know, maybe four mm -hmm. before you're out of ammo. Yeah, the world's so flipped upside down for people that don't really know anything about guns. I, me and every other civilian just assume, well, if it's on full auto, I'll never miss, right? I'll yeah. just go like this until everyone's dead. And then you're like, <laughs> brrr, click. Uh, <laughs> and you're like, shit. Uh, and meanwhile, that guy's still snapping ones at you. Pop, pop, pop. You're like, fuck. Like, I made a mistake. <laughs> Grabs a kid. 
the job size more. Oh, take a name. So that rifle looked badass, so I'm looking up real quick. It's an FN, FNC, let's see what's the, some, so it's a, so yeah, it's a 556 five, NATO assault rifle developed by the Belgian arms manufacturer FN Herstel and introduced in the late 1970s. Uh, it was developed between 75 and 77 for NATO standardizing, standardization trials as a less expensive alternative to the M16. The rifle designed based on the FN C76 prototype which itself originated from the commercially unsuccessful FN Cal rifle. This prototype was soon withdrawn from the NATO competition after performing poorly due to its rushed development. Uh, let's use Indonesia. Purchased 10,000 of them in 1982 for its Air Force. You see, like, there's so much history in these rifles that they're using. Mm. Like, who would have thought of that? To put that weapon system in there is crazy. And then Al Pacino just... Like, most of the times when people take shots like that, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. But when Al Pacino did it, he's got both eyes open. Did he have both eyes when he was aiming? I couldn't tell. I'm pretty sure he had both eyes open, um, aiming down his sights. You could tell that he was, like, actually looking down and aiming. And based on his, the way he was shooting this whole movie all, while moving, mm -hmm. I have no doubts that he couldn't, his character couldn't make that shot, that right. head shot. So just a sick scene. Just looks competent. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's pulling the trigger all the way down right now. Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, well, yeah, I mean, it's completely com depressed right now. Mm. All right, just nitpicking Robert De Niro. He's not yet a Green Beret. Robert De Niro will later <laughs> become a Green Beret in Dirty Grandpa, but he's not yet there. Ah. So he doesn't know that you shouldn't keep your finger on the trigger until you're ready to fire. And you probably shouldn't have the trigger just fully compressed uh, because it's not going to shoot when you pull it. No, uh, if I keep your fluid pressed, but just keep kind of, bullets just keep flying out of the gun all the time. He's like, I'm just going to flick the hammer up and make it go off. Absolutely. I don't even know if you can. No, you can't fully depress it and have the trigger, the hammer stay cocked. Uh huh. So it's probably just in a second stage. Uh, but either way. He's not a Green Beret yet, so I'm going to give him this pass that mm -hmm. he shouldn't have his finger completely engulfing the trigger like that when you're not shooting. But that's nitpicking because that is a badass movie. It's almost crappy watching these movies because it makes me feel so sad for the current state of movies. Yeah, I know. For like, all the movies that we do have to It's review. like driving a millionaire's car and then going back to your shitbox car. You know what I mean? It's like it just reminds me of how crappy movies are now. Especially because we just watched the Steven Seagal one. And but that was next level shitty. John Wick 4. Ooh, that's going to be a coming good one. Out. I still haven't seen the trailer. I saw a snippet of it and I like swiped it off because I don't want to watch it yeah, on I my phone. Want, I, I want to watch wanna... it at home, like in the theater, and watch the. I'm not gonna watch any of it. I'm just gonna wait for the movie. No, I want to watch the trailer with good sound, and then mm -hmm. I'll and then I'll watch the movie. But all right, guys, if you made it this far, do us a favor, like, subscribe, hit a comment, leave a comment down below. We really appreciate it. All the subscribes help so much, guys, and the comments and the likes. You guys have no idea. You guys are super active in that comment section, and we love it. If you have something positive to say, if you have something negative to say, or if you just confused about something, all those comments are appreciated because it builds a community and it keeps that open dialogue so we can have fun with these. Because the, the review is only one part. The comment section is a whole other part mm -hmm. of this show. And it's, it makes it fun because everyone gets a voice. You guys recommend movies. You talk about things that we got wrong, things that we got right, things you don't agree with. And so it builds like a community in the comment right, section. Yeah. It's so fun. So the comment section is fun and it's part of it and we do read them we read a lot of them we don't have time to always respond to them all but we read almost all of them so thank you guys so much um, if you want the unedited versions or the extended versions of these go check us out at the fngacademy.com sign up for tier three or if you just want to support the channel um, it's like our patreon is the tier three so we really appreciate you and for everyone who already is a tier three tier one or tier two member of our mentor program thank you guys so much you're the best and, and we hope that you're getting everything out of it that you need and we'll see you guys in the next one